Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today we're going to talk about 11 horror movies that are scarier and better than The Conjuring. So The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, just released in theaters and on HBO Max. I've seen it. I did like it. I thought it was a good addition to The Conjuring series. However, they do tend to be more like a quote-unquote roller coaster ride where they're intense, they're nail-biting, it makes you scared in the theater on the first viewing because they do go for the jugular. In my opinion, they go for it a little too quickly. They're kind of the cinematic equivalent of premature ejaculation. I don't know. Can we... Can we say that on YouTube? And that's all well and good. That's a fun movie going experience. All the movies on this list though, while all of them are not necessarily as intense as The Conjuring on our first viewing, they are all gonna stick with you much longer than The Conjuring movies. You've been warned. And they're all lesser known horror movies, so there's a very good chance there's gonna be a handful on this list that you have not seen. We're gonna start off this list with the free streaming services like Tubi and Pluto TV, and then work our way up to Netflix and then before the end of the video, I'll tell you about the scariest movie from 2020 that nobody is talking about. So let's go ahead and get started with movies included on free streaming services. Last Shift has a lot in common with The Conjuring movies and it's the most accessible movie on this list because it's free with Tubi, Vudu, and Pluto TV. Obviously there will be ads, but if you're gonna get free, you gotta pay for it somehow. But The Last Shift circles around an abandoned police station or a soon to be abandoned police station. There's one occupant holding down the fort and some weird things start going on basic horror movie setup, and like I said, has a lot in common with the Conjuring universe, except for budget. Because they didn't have endless resources available to them, they had to make things work with very little, and as a result, I think on film, some of the scares are even more effective. Now another one on Tubi, and I believe only on Tubi, is The Eyes of My Mother. This one is recent, but all done in black and white, and is for the art film crowd. If you're turned off by the black and white, you're probably also going to be turned off to the way that this movie was filmed, but if you typically like art films, this one got under my skin more than any horror movie has in the last 10 years. I'm not joking, when I had to go shower after watching this, I felt so gross, yet it didn't feel cheap. I felt like the filmmaker did an incredible job of just establishing this really grim sense of dread in a way that I hadn't quite seen before. I don't wanna to give too much away with this one, but if the way I'm describing it sounds like you, odds are you're gonna love this movie, but fair warning, it's gonna give you the willies to say the least. And if you don't really like those more art film type things, this one may lose you a little bit, but it is super creepy. Now, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we have Terrifier, which is just a gloriously bloody gore fest. This is for slasher movie fans. Odds are a lot of you have seen it because it has made the rounds. There's a sequel that's about to come out. This movie features Art the Clown, who you may have seen in All Hallows' Eve. This movie is dedicated to him, and it is just, like I said, an absolute gore fest. However, they do subvert some expectations. I think some of that stuff is absolutely fantastic. You're not gonna get spades of story or anything here, but for this genre, this subgenre of just gore fest, they do some interesting things that mixes things up, and then you're also just never left wanting for action. This movie just keeps moving. It's awful, terrible stuff, but if you like that kind of stuff, Terrifier is just a top-notch B-movie. Eden Lake is one of the oldest movies featured on this list because I did want to bring you somewhat recent releases, but it's such a good slasher flick and I'm so happy that it's included on Tubi because this movie has been absent from streaming services here in America for a really long time, yet it's incredible. And it's not only one of the best casts on this list, it's one of the best casts in a horror movie with Michael Fassbender, Jack O'Connell, and Kelly Riley. In this movie, a couple goes out for a camping trip where they cross paths with the wrong people and then just a chase ensues. Simple setup, but very well put together. Nail biting scene after nail biting scene in this one. It's grim, it's graphic, but again, I've said a word a few times on this video already, it's effective. It works, 
It is a fantastic thriller with some just rough, rough horror elements in it. It will kind of take you by surprise if you like movies like that. Eden Lake is top notch. I can't believe it's not more well known, but that's what I love about recommending movies like this. Now let's switch over to Hulu. By the way, the full list of all the movies I'm talking about in this video is in the top pinned comment. Just scroll down, open up that comment, take a screenshot with your phone. Now you've got the full list in your phone. You can highlight it, mark it up, whatever you want to do so that you never run out of good movies to watch. But right now on Hulu, they've got a fantastic little gem called The Devil's Candy. This is another one that will definitely appeal to fans of The Conjuring. This one does feel a little bit unfinished to me. However, the scares and everything I think are a lot more effective than they are in The Conjuring. It's a prime example of why I made this list. I think it winds up tension a little bit slower. It doesn't hit you over the head with things the way The Conjuring movies do. And as a result, the payoff is much more satisfying. And the chill factor, like I said, it's gonna stick with you. You're gonna be a little bit more creeped out after watching this one than you are The Conjuring movies. That said, if you've been a fan of those movies at all, definitely watch The Devil's Candy. It's one of the better, lesser known movies to have come out in the past decade. And then still on Hulu is what I would say is maybe the least scary movie on this list, but it's also the best film. It's actually from South Korea, so you will have to read subtitles, but it's a vampire movie called Thirst. This reminds me of Anne Rice's visions for vampires. It feels fairly real. It feels like things vampires might actually have to deal with in the real world, and it is shot as though it were a real occurrence. I really dig this movie. It's creepy, it's eerie. It's never really trying to scare you, but it is trying to show you the horror of being this immortal, bloodthirsty creature. Unlike some other vampire movies, Thirst does not make it look like a good life to live. It looks pretty miserable, and that's ultimately the point of the movie, and again, very effective. Just like Eden Lake, I have not seen this available on streaming in quite some time, so I was super excited to see it on Hulu, and even though it's not really bone chilling, it is a killer vampire flick that a lot of people have yet to discover. <laughs> Still on Hulu, but this one is also included with Prime Video, and it is the newest movie on this list. It just came out last year. This is gonna appeal to fans of movies like Midsommar and Hereditary, and that is Saint Maud. Now in this movie, a young nurse starts to get a little too involved with the life of one of her patients, and strange, creepy things start happening. It sounds like a very, very basic setup. However, this is not a very, very basic movie. This is another one that is gonna appeal to the art film crowd. Every shot in this movie is not only beautiful, but also incredibly dark and creepy. The main character, her performance, does an incredibly effective job at being terribly creepy throughout the movie, sometimes inadvertently so, story-wise, and other times it's very, very intentional. This one is going to crawl under your skin and stay there for a while. This is another one I had trouble washing off of me for a while. However, if you did not like movies like Midsommar, you felt like they were maybe a little too slow, not really your type of horror movie, Saint Maud is probably not going to be for you, but if you liked those movies, this is one of the better things to have come out in recent years, just in terms of something that sticks with you in a really negative way. That said, we're gonna jump to Shudder. Now, Shudder is a streaming service I've loved for a long time. It's packed with tons of horror movies and some really good obscure ones. It is a deep, vast well of hidden gem horror. However, I picked one out that's a little more well-known on that platform because it is a little less well-known elsewhere. While this one is included with Shudder, if you don't have Shudder, it may be well worth spending a couple bucks to rent Color Out of Space. Now this is a direct adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft, which is not very common. H.P. Lovecraft influences a lot of horror sci-fi fantasy movies, but there's very few direct adaptations. This is one of them. In addition to that, there's a whole backstory with the director and everything that I was fascinated by, but for this video, in terms of a horror movie, it works really well. Most of what Color Out of Space tries to do is different from what you see in the Conjuring movies, and I like that. It's not just going for cheap, fast scares. If anything, this movie takes a very long time to ramp up, but once it gets going, maybe around the halfway point, like I said, a long time, 
it's almost too intense. Like, I did not show this movie to Miss Van Damme. There's a little thing with one of the boys in the movie who also happens to be in The Devil Made Me Do It, just as a coincidence. But the things that happen to him in this movie are way more horrifying than what happens to him in The Conjuring. I'm not joking around with that. This is one that will stick with you. And not only that, You've got this amazing sort of psychedelic sci-fi thing happening as the movie ramps up as well that is beautiful and just sort of stunning to look at. And you get a pretty decent Nicolas Cage performance. He's sort of in the background to everything going on in this movie. And honestly, while he did do a good job, I feel like they could have almost put anybody in that role in this particular movie, which you can't usually say about Nicolas Cage. But the way that this thing came together, the adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft, I think it just sort of hits on all cylinders and it's just super creepy and also just completely different and kind of dazzling to watch. All right, now it's time for Netflix. And Netflix does purge a lot of horror movies and then they bring them on for sort of the Halloween season. So it is slim pickings in terms of horror there right now. They have both Conjuring movies, like I said. But then they also have what I consider to be one of the more underrated horror movies to have come out in recent years. And that is As Above, So Below. Now this one got marketed as sort of your basic level horror movie that's just in theaters to get teenagers to buy tickets on the weekends. And I had zero zero interest in watching this movie. It has been on Netflix for a couple years. I have recommended it multiple times. This is another one that does take a little while getting in, but as soon as it starts to ramp up, it really never calms back down. They really go for it in this movie, which is why it makes this list. I loved how just hard they went in the paint with this movie. And you do have to be a little patient, but that is to be appreciated. I mean, the best horror movies ever made start off slow. They don't really get into it. They let you sort of immerse yourself in the world, and then all the scares are much more effective. If you like those demonic type horror movies and you've never seen As Above, So Below, you're messing up. It's one of the better ones in that genre to have come out recently. I'll even say it's one of the better found footage movies to have come out in recent years. I say recent years, I mean I think the movie's like five, six years old now. One more Netflix movie that has a lot in common with The Conjuring and then I'm going to tell you about one of the best horror movies from last year that nobody's been talking about. But The Girl on the Third Floor actually stars pro wrestler, ex-pro wrestler CM Punk in kind of an Evil Dead type of movie. Now, The Girl on the Third Floor is nowhere near as fun as The Evil Dead but CM Punk is kind of giving a Bruce Campbell type performance. Not only that, he does kind of look like him. And I will say this movie has some scares that are very, very similar to things in the new Conjuring movie, and I think they're done better. Just like some of the other movies on this list, they had less to work with, less is done digitally. Most of the effects here, while they do do some camera and editing tricks, most of what you see is real in camera and it feels scarier as a result. I would argue that this movie does a better job of scaring you and staying with you than the Conjuring movies, but I wouldn't necessarily argue that it's a better movie. And with that, I'll finish up this video by telling you about The Empty Man. So this was released in 2020 with a whisper. They didn't announce it really, it just sort of came and went. Likely because Fox was bought out by Disney, this movie was completed. It's very dark, very weird, very twisted, and odds are the new producers just didn't know what to do with it. So it got released and it's just sort of disappeared out into the ether. Now, it's still available to rent. It has not appeared included on any streaming services yet, but this is a long horror movie. It exceeds two hours and it opens up with a 20 minute prologue that has very, very little to do with the actual story itself. But you get a very good role by James Badge Dale, one of my favorite actors. And then the movie is directed by a first time director who is clearly a major fan of David Fincher. Not only does this movie look a lot like David Fincher's work, this director did do a lot of work on some of the special features for David Fincher special edition DVDs and Blu-rays. Interesting side note. That said, The Empty Man is a weird one. When it concludes, you're not necessarily gonna be 100% sure what you just watched, and that's not the best part of it. The best part of it is just how unusual and creepy it is throughout. It does a lot of things that a lot of big budget horror movies try to do, but it's more patient. My understanding is that the Fox producers really allowed this director to do what he wanted with the movie, 
And as a result, you got something that was maybe not as marketable, but that is much more effective at creeping the shit out of you. So if that sounds like you, check out The Empty Man. If not, let me know what movies on this list you do plan on watching. Also, help me thank the Patreon supporters. They have done a great job of keeping this channel alive. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description below. There's also a link where you can become a channel member and get access to exclusive videos right here on YouTube. But I will keep making these lists as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special horror edition, and you will see me on the next one.